Okay, I'm going to spend a couple minutes here diagramming half a dozen categorical syllogisms with Venn diagrams to show you how it's done and to um, make clear what the principles are for doing that. Let's start with a, um, a valid syllogism, the AAA1. It says all M's are P, all S's are M, and all S's are P. Uh, I label always the same way the minor term, the major term, and the middle term this way. Uh, now we're going to diagram by shading. Universal statements get shading away of areas as the way to diagram them, and particular statements use a, an X to mark the location of something. All M is P. Well, here's where M and P overlap. All the M's that aren't P are here. All the P's that aren't M are here. If you want to show all M is P, the way to do it is to eliminate this part of the M circle. The shading indicates elimination of the part of the circle. It's not highlighting it, it's erasing it. So that now all that's left of the M circle is the part inside P. All M is P. That shows the first premise. All S is M. Use a different color. <coughs> all S is M. You want to get rid of the part of the S circle that's outside of the M circle. And that's going to be those two sections up there. So now the only area of the S circle that's left of the original four, one, two, three, four areas were there at first, the only area that hasn't been shaded is right there in the center. And that's all S now. Other, nothing else is S except for that area right there. And that's inside of M. Does that show, here's what you do, you diagram the two premises, and then you look to see, is the conclusion there? And the answer is yes, the conclusion is there because this area is all of S inside of P. All S is P, here's S, and it's completely inside of P. So the AAA1 is a valid syllogism. That's the way the picture looks for it. Uh, let's try an AEE2. All P's are M, all S's are M, no S's are M, rather, and no S's are P. And diagram that. Three circles, S, P, and M. <clears throat> Again, just diagram the premises and then look to see if the conclusion shows up. All P is M. You're going to get rid of this part up here, both of these areas. That way, all that's left of the P circle is these two areas. They're inside the M. No S's are M. That means get rid of these two areas because you want to leave, you want to exclude S completely from M. Now, does this show that no S is P? Yes, it does, because the area that where S and P would have overlapped has been eliminated. So there's no overlap between S and P. Again, you diagram one of the premises, and then you look to see if the conclusion shows up. Uh, let's try an uh, EEO. Four, so PM, um, MS, SP, SP and M. Here you're going to diagram two E statements, so you're going to get rid of the overlap between P and M. No P is M. You can shade out this stuff. No M is S. Shade out this stuff. Does that show that some S is not P? Certainly not. Some S is not P would require that there was an X over here, but these two premises did not in any way call for uh, an X, so there's certainly no X in the needed area. So that's invalid. The, the, um, part, so let's move on to another one. Again, we'll use an X, uh, like an A, I, I, 2. So P, M, S, M, S, P. All P is M. Eliminate this part so that all the P is inside the M circle. Some S is M. Oh, well, here there's two areas, this area and this area, where S overlaps with M. You can't put the X here because you don't know it's on that side. You can't put the X here because you don't know it's on that side. So you put the X on the line in between those two areas. And now you look for the conclusion. What does the conclusion call for? It calls for an S 
for an x to be inside the s circle and inside the p circle. Well, if it, fall, if it falls here, then that, then that happens. If it falls here, it doesn't happen. We don't know for sure. And since deduction is all about what's necessary, the conclusion here is not shown as a necessary consequence of the premises. So this is invalid, this A, I, I, <coughs> figure two. Uh, try an I, O, E, figure one. Some M is P, some M is P, so in the overlap of P with M, you're going to put the X, it's going to go on that line again. And some S is not M, it's going to have to be in the S circle, but outside the M circle. So it's either going to be here or here, it's going to have to go on that line. Obviously this has not shown that no S is P, that would have required that this area here be shaded away. Diagramming two particular statements, you're never going to shade away anything whatsoever, so that's an invalid syllogism form as well, the IOE uh, figure one. How about an AOO2? <clears throat> All P's are M, shade away this part. Some S is not M. All right, the only area of S that's outside of M at the moment is this area right here. This has been shaded away. So the X goes there. Some S is not M. It's S, but it's not inside the M circle. Does that show that some S is not P? Yes, it does, because that X is inside of S and it's outside of P. So that's a valid argument, the A002. And how about an A, E, E, 3? <clears throat> All M is P, so you're going to diagram away, shade away this area, these two areas. Now all that's left of M is inside of P. Shade no M is S, that means you're going to shade these two areas. Of course, we've already shaded that one, but it doesn't hurt to shade it again. That shows that whatever's M is over here, whatever's S is over there, no, no overlap between the two. Does that show that some S is not, that no S is P? No, it doesn't, because this area is left here, and that's an area where S and P overlap. So that's an invalid argument uh, in that case. So I hope that those uh, examples help to make it more clear, and you keep practicing. Um, send me questions if you have questions and I'll be glad to answer them.